Getting started in Black Desert Online is a lot easier than you might think. This game has been out for a while, and over the years, many systems have been added or changed. With that, guides get outdated and new players get left behind. But worry not my friend, because in today's video, I'll be leading you through the early game of Black Desert Online. Before we get started with the guide, I think it's important to outline exactly what counts as the early game. Lucky for us, this is made easy to define with the season system that was added a few years back. Today, I'll take you from the very first time you log into Black Desert Online to having not just one, but two level 61 characters, full pin to Vala gear, and a completed main story questline. Whether it's your first time or your 1000th time booting up BDO, we are all greeted by the main menu. From here, clicking start will bring up the server selection screen. While we are here, let's touch on how servers work in this game because it's a little different than other games in this genre. Unlike New World or Lost Ark, your characters are not bound to a server, meaning everyone in a region can play together no matter what server they click here. For the most part, the servers in Black Desert Online are just a way to split up players so they're not constantly fighting over the same resources and grind spots. For our purposes today, we will be heading straight into a seasoned server. Everyone on these seasoned servers will have to be on a seasonal character, which we'll go over as soon as we choose our first class. I should mention, if there is no option to join a seasoned server on the screen, it means you've logged into BDO during the downtime between seasons. If that happens, honestly, as a new player, I would put down the game for around 2 weeks and wait until the next season starts up. Once you choose a server, you will now be on the character selection screen. Obviously, as a new player, you won't have as many characters as I do, but that doesn't matter since we all create a seasonal character in the same exact way. When clicking on the create new character button, you'll be given the option between a seasonal character and a normal character. We of course will create a seasonal character as they can access the season servers and have a ton of catch up mechanics to make your progression through the early game as efficient as possible. Don't worry, your seasonal character will graduate into a normal character later on, so there is no downsides in choosing this option. Now you are presented with the hardest choice of any MMO and that of course is choosing what class you want to play. Similar to most Asia based MMOs, unfortunately classes in this game are gender locked. I should also note that this game does not follow the all too familiar Holy Trinity archetype found in many other MMOs. This means there is no defined healer, tank, or DPS roles. Much like Lost Ark, every class in this game is DPS, with a few select classes here and there having access to some support skills, such as heals and buffs for your party. Pearl Abyss actually does a pretty decent job keeping all classes feeling fresh and balanced for all forms of content. So my recommendation is to just choose a class that looks interesting to you. That being said, I know I'll have a few comments asking about the quote unquote best progression classes. So if you want to min max, I would say the top five classes to get through the early game would be Berserker, Valkyrie, Nova, Megu, and Musa. Your choice here really doesn't matter as much as you think. There's a mechanic that we'll go over at the end of this guide that allows you to make a one to one copy of all of your stats and XP to move over to another class of your choice. For this season, I decided that I will be playing as a Succession Mewa. The character creator in Black Desert Online is very, very in-depth and from what I understand is considered the standard for a good character creator system in the MMO space. If you are like me and have no idea on how to make a good looking character, then there is a beauty album where you can choose other people's creations instead. Once your waifu or a husbando is complete, it is time to actually jump into the game. <laughs> If you are brand new to the game, the starting tutorial will go over the basics of movement and some combat. If combat feels slow, don't worry, things will quickly ramp up soon. When you get the option of a starting region, all new players should go with the Ancient Stone Chamber start as this is where the main story questline begins. Loading into the world and taking one look at the cluttered UI and thinking that this is some kind of scam mobile game is a normal first reaction to have. Bear with it for now, we will go over some settings soon, but before then, let's go over some basics. Pressing the control key will get your mouse on the screen so you can click on all of these UI elements. 
right clicking on the quest menu towards the right of your screen will show you the fastest route to the next quest objective. Pressing the T key will also allow you to auto run to that destination. Every once in a while, you may need to speak to your black spirit and to do so, you have to press the comma key to bring him up. Your black spirit will be your little helper throughout the game and is responsible for giving you a lot of the major quests. If you have played through the main story in the past, you will notice things are quite different. Recently, they have added cutscenes and questing now does a good job teaching the basics, but I'll chime in to elaborate on things I think that they have missed. The first goal for us is to hit level 7 and to do so, just continue questing. Once you hit level 7, you should now be able to freely change your settings and UI elements to your preference. Press the escape key to open up the menu, and from here open up your settings. Here I'll quickly go over some settings to make your game a little more manageable. In performance settings under camera performance, I would change the camera vision range all the way up. This will increase your FOV and makes it so you don't feel so zoomed in on your character. Directly below that, I would change the camera effects from 100 to 0. This completely gets rid of the screen shake every time you use your skills. Under general settings in the alerts tab, you can also get rid of all the pop-ups of people enhancing at the top of your screen. I personally recommend playing with almost all of these turned off. In the escape menu, you can also edit your UI to be exactly how you want. Between these features, you can really customize your client to your liking, but explaining this topic would need a whole separate video. So if you're interested, then let me know in the comment section below if you want to see me make some kind of settings and UI guide for BDO. As a reward for these beginning quests, you'll get items and gear. You can open up the inventory by pressing I, and in here you will find all the stuff you've been collecting. Most items can be used from this menu by simply pressing right click on them. As for equipment and gearing, I'll go into more detail later on, but just for now, equip anything that seems like an upgrade. Eventually, you'll get a quest that requires you to open up your skill menu by pressing the K key. A vast majority of skills in this game can be cast through some sort of key combination. Shift left mouse button for example. The skill menu is a great way to see how to cast all of your skills that you are unlocking. Speaking unlocking, you can also lock skills by pressing this lock icon and this ensures that the skill will never come out if you press that key combination. While we are here, I'll briefly touch on the basics of combat. In addition to pressing the key combination to cast your skills, some skills can also be used from your hotbar. The difference between hotbar casting and key combinations is that a lot of skills do not cancel or flow from the hotbar. This means for more fluid combat and higher damage potential, it is better to learn the key combinations of all of your skills. Skills are not the only thing that can be placed on the hotbar. Items like food and potions can also be placed on the hotbar making it easier to heal mid-combat. Keep following the main story questline and you will eventually be met with your first challenging fight against the boss, Red Nose. If you die here, it's not that big of a deal, you get free respawns all the way up to level 20. After he is defeated, you will head over to Velia, which is the first major city. By now, you probably have noticed a ton of question marks on the minimap above NPCs. By speaking to an NPC for the first time, you'll get knowledge that increases your in-game energy, which is a helpful thing to do. Every major city in this game will be visited often, especially this starter town of Velia, so I recommend everyone to take a little extra time here to get to know the area. You can also get a ton of side quests here, but they are not necessary. For this guide, I tried to do as little side content as possible to prove that you can easily level up through just rushing the main story questline. I made this guide as slow to start because honestly, learning any new game can be overwhelming. If there are any resources like energy or contribution points that I don't go over, it's because they're not necessary for getting through the early game. There are tons of mechanics that run deep in this game with systems that would take hours to explain. So for now, just don't worry about it. Our goal from here is to complete the main story questline and progress our season pass. The season pass can be accessed by pressing this icon in the top right of our screen next to the minimap. To progress the season pass, you just have to do the objectives listed. Don't stress about this too much as you'll finish most of these passively as you continue to push the story. Much like a battle pass, there's also a paid track of items that require purchasing the season pass with real life money. To be clear, I do not buy the season pass at any point in this guide. The MSQ is broken up into four regions, Balanos, Serendia, Calpheon, and Medaya. If you ever get lost, you can press the O key to open up the quest menu. And in here, you can keep track of what quests you have left to do. When filming this guide, it took me around six hours to completely finish all of these quests. I wasn't going for a speedrun record or anything, just casually playing through the game. If you rush or try to get immersed in the story, I'm sure your times will differ slightly, but as a general baseline, this is around how long you can expect to be questing for. 
Questing through Balanos will give you a general feel for how the rest of the main story quest will go. If you have completed the main story quest line on another character in the past, then you have the option of taking the simplified quest line so you don't have to complete the whole thing from scratch again. But because I'm a good YouTuber, I'll run through the MSQ with you guys and point out any issues I run into. Speaking of issues I ran into, I straight up died to the Phantom Knight boss at the top of Kron Castle, which is a little embarrassing considering how many hours I have in the game, but also shows me that newer players might struggle here. So let me put you guys on a few buffs to make things a little less painful. By this point of the MSQ, I got a few golden bars that we could turn into the most important currency in this game, silver. Head to the storage keeper in Velia to convert these gold bars into cold hard cash. With this money, I would run up to the central market, which is where players buy and sell to each other, and I would look for simple cron mills. Buy a couple to keep in your inventory. This food buff is extremely strong and is used all the way into the very, very end game, so getting used to buying these is good practice for later. To use this buff, just right click it in your inventory and you'll be powered up for the next 2 hours. I would also use some silver at the general shop to buy some extra large HP and MP potions to keep your health bar and your MP bars full during combat. Taking this little time to prep will save you a ton of time and headache later on when things get a little bit more difficult. Hitting level 20 is another big milestone for your account. Pulling up the quest menu and pressing O and then pressing this all quest buttons will allow you to see and accept all quests so you can do even more side content. Also death now has a penalty of losing XP. Death from here on out will have a menu that looks like this. You can spend real life money to buy tears to spawn up where you died, or you can spawn at the nearest safe zone, which in most cases is not that far from where you died. You can also spawn up at the nearest town, but this will almost always put you very far from where you drop dead. I want to make it clear that I have never once in over 6,000 hours of playtime ever bought a tier to respawn where I died. You get plenty from events, and there are a total of three locations in all of BDO where I would say using a tier makes sense. So don't feel pressure to buy these. As for the XP you lose, it is so marginal that I don't think I've ever died and noticed a difference in my leveling. Now let's talk about gearing in Black Desert Online. As you complete quest, make sure to look out for Naru gear, as this gear is intended for you to upgrade and use all the way until the end of the MSQ. Pressing I and looking into the equipment wheel, you will see that you have 4 armor slots for your boots, gloves, chest, and helm, and 2 weapon slots for your main hand and sub weapon. In addition to those slots, you have your accessories that consist of two rings, two earrings, a belt, and a necklace. You can also see your current attack power and defense power. These stats help define how much damage you will be doing and taking respectively. Along with the Naru gear, you will also get beginner blackstones for both weapons and armor. Press comma to bring up your black spirit and click on the enhancement tab. Later in this guide, I will go over this in depth, but for now, just slam these blackstones into your gear to upgrade them as you progress through the story. You should be able to get all of your Naru gear to plus 20, also known as pin, by the end of the MSQ. As for accessories, just use whatever you find, as enhancing these isn't necessary until much later on. Also, the Season Pass is a great way to get more beginner blackstones to push your gear even further. Another huge milestone is level 50, where the game will cap your level until you speak to the Black Spirit and finish the Go Beyond Limits quest. This will unlock PvP and will allow you to get run down by other players. But since you should be on a seasoned server, there is nothing to worry about as you're not allowed to flag up on here. From here, it was pretty smooth sailing all the way into the end of the MSQ. You will know that you are done when you've completed the Madaya story. First off, I want to say good job. That is one major step out of the way, and with that objective finished, we have some new goals to work for as we push towards the end of the season. Let's work on getting out of this Naru gear and transition into Tuvala gear, which is what we will be enhancing until the end of the season. To do so, all you have to do is keep tapping your Naru gear until it's pin. Once it is pin, you will be converting them into Pride Tuvala gear. Remember, at this point, you should have all Pride Tuvala armor and weapons. Accessories can stay the same as they are for now. With our new drip, we are heading to another huge milestone in hitting level 56. I ended off the MSQ at level 54, so I had a little grinding to do. To level up quickly, I headed up to Sasan's garrison to pay homage to the good old times when this was seen as one of the best grind spots in the game. To make this as smooth as possible, you can press the Y key to open up the challenge menu. In here, you can get a scroll to increase your combat XP by 200%. Also, in the Season Pass, you should have this Spirit Stone that you can put in the center of your equipment wheel. By checking this box in the middle, the Spirit Stone will be constantly active during our grind. I just found a rotation with a few small mobs to kill over and over again, and in 40 minutes or so, I was level 56 and ready for our next step.
Level 56 is huge for us because now we'll be able to do the quest to unlock our awakening and succession forms for our class. To do so, press the comma key to speak to our black spirit and in the main quest, you will find a quest with the awakening tag on it. Run through both this and the succession quest as soon as possible so you can unlock some real power for your class. Besides Shy and Archer, every class has both a succession and an awakening form. Succession takes all the skills we've been using up to this point and upgrades them into their prime version, also adding new passes and a couple new skills to really round out the class. Awakening gives you a whole new awakening weapon to work with. You get to keep all the absolute skills you've been using up to this point, but you also now have an awakening skill tree that you use in tandem with the main hand skills. You don't unlock everything for your class until level 60, but for now, either form you choose will be a huge upgrade from what you've been used to. We are almost at the point where we can start to push for the end of the season goals. But just before that, there are a couple quests that are mandatory for you to complete. Press O to open up the quest menu and go to the suggested tab and look for any quest related to pets. In order to grind, you need pets to pick up the loot for you. By completing these suggested quests, you should have a full roster of 5 pets. Even tier 1 pets are better than nothing and are needed for the next few steps we have planned for the early game. We have completely transitioned into the last stretch of the season. We have some goals to hit before the season ends, so let's go over those. These goals can be completed in any order, and a lot of the grinding we will be doing will help us accomplish multiple goals at the same time. Our new goals are to push our character to level 61, enhance all of our gear and accessories to pin to Vala, complete the season pass, and push through a few more main story quests to unlock new regions. Oh, I don't know, I don't know, no, I don't know. To reach these goals, there are a few core mechanics we need to go over. Now that we have pets, it is time to really learn how to grind. I have a whole video already up devoted to grinding, so I will just briefly go over the basics here. Grinding is simply just running in circles, killing monsters for their XP and loot. In our case, we are specifically looking for Silver, Typhoid Blackstones, Refined Magical Blackstones, Tuvala Ore, and Rift Fragments. Oftentimes in the season, we will also be completing some kill count quests to get even more rewards. The most important of these quests would be the weekly grind quests that you can find in the recurring tab on the quest menu. Choose one of these stronger Tuvala gear quests. You could get a ridiculous amount of time filled blackstones this way, and if you've already finished full pin Tuvala armor and weapons, then I would go for Tuvala ore instead. The other type of quest would be region quests. In the description, I will leave a link to this website that lists all of the seasonal grind spots that grant rewards just from killing a certain amount of mobs in the area. Speaking of grind spots, there are a ton of seasonal grind spots for you to try out. So many that I'll just point out a few notable ones. Desert Nagas and Basham Base are normally the first two grind spots players try out as the regional quest only requires you to be level 56. Also in this area, you can find Centaurs, which is where you want to go if you need silver. The silver here is the highest you can grind for during the season. Polly's Forest used to be the best spot for both skill points and gathering the three key materials for enhancing Tuvala. As this place is oftentimes contested, I actually prefer to grind in a hidden spot known as Marnie Cave. Not only do you get a ton of skill points, but you also get a massive amount of the enhancing materials we need to make pin Tuvala gear. For combat XP, the best spot during the season is Murmok Ruins, also known as Trees. The XP and Silver here is great and is one of the only party-based grinding spots available during the season. Lastly, I always recommend starting your grind for the infinite HP and MP potions at one of these 6 grind spots. I won't be going over these rare treasure items in this guide, but just know it's much better to start grinding these spots now to save hundreds of hours later. It is important to note that every grind spot from here on out will have a recommended AP and DP you should hit before you attempt to kill mobs in that area. The only real way to push our AP and DP from here on out is through enhancing our Tuvala gear. I'll cover enhancing in the next segment. I go over a ton of buffs in my grinding video, and for a newer player, there's no way you would know how to access half of them. So here's some easy buffs for your first few grinds. Whenever you get to whatever grind spot you want to try out, I would make sure that you use a few item collection scrolls and turn on this buff to either level 1 or level 2. Level 2 will make you more silver, but will drain your scrolls twice as fast. 
Keeping it simple, the only two damage buffs I would use are the simple Cron Meal and Alchemy Stone that we've already been over. From here, I would make sure you have five pets turned on and make sure they're set to Agile so they pick up loot as fast as they possibly can. You can pop as many XP buffs as possible as hitting level 61 is one of our major goals still. I will leave a link to this website that shows every XP buff in Black Desert Online down in the description. Full pen to volley gear will be a journey, so buckle up as I take you through how I like to enhance this gear all the way through the ranks of Pry, Duo, Tri, Tet, and finally Pen. For enhancing Tuvala, the three most important items you are looking for are time-filled blackstones, refined magical blackstones, and Tuvala ore. Let's go over what these are used for. Time-filled blackstones are used on every tap of your Tuvala gear as you try and get to pen. They also have the side effect of being able to trade into these other two resources. Refined magical blackstones are used to guarantee a piece from duo to try. Tuvala Ore can repair armor and weapons as you fail your enhancement, and is also used to exchange for more accessories. Now let's go over all the ways you can get your hands on these items. You can grind, fish, gather, kill bosses, complete season pass rewards, challenges, dungeons, the season leveling box, horse training, red battlefield, and questing. I know that sounds overwhelming, but realistically, you will passively be getting these three items just as you play in the season server. Now let's get into the actual painful part of this process, which is the enhancing. So far up to this point, we have been slamming beginner blackstones into our Naru gear until they went pin. For Tuvala, I have to explain fail stacking so we can increase our odds of a successful enhancement. For every point we have in our fail stack, the higher the odds our next enhancement will go. So for example, if I tap this pin Tuvala on a 67 stack, the odds will be lower than if I were to tap on a 73 stack. To increase our fail stack starting from zero, we will use either Blackstones or Advice of Valks. Advice of Valks is the easiest to understand as the number at the end shows exactly how high you will increase the fail stack. Early on, you will most likely run out of these, so your next best option would be to use Blackstones, either obtained yourself or bought off the central market. The other way to increase fail stacks is by failing an enhancement. This behaves as a pity system, making each failure count towards the next enhancement success. On screen, you can see a chart showing what fail stack you should start with for Pry to pin to Vala gear and accessories. If any of that sounds complicated, it's because it is. I think the easiest way to explain enhancement is if I just did it in front of you. Starting with Pry armor and weapons, you could tap on anywhere between a 0 and a 20 fail stack. The first enhancement is always the easiest because even if you fail, the gear won't downgrade. From duo to try, I would use 20 refined magical blackstones to get a 100% chance to upgrade as this is really their only purpose. If I run out of refined magical blackstones, which will happen often, then I would just tap for try on a 30 stack. This is where things get rough as failing the tap from duo to try will send us all the way back to pry making us start this process all over again. Yes, this can get frustrating, but try to keep a level head because once we start grinding, you'll have more than enough material to get our full pin to Vala. Once you start getting your first few pieces of Tri to Vala gear, head over to the NPC Fugar who can be found in every major city and pick up all of the enhancement quests. Once you equip the Tri to Vala gear and turn in these quests, you can get some free advice of Valks plus 40. We will be using these to go from Tri to Tet. Here is where it gets important to start to save your fail stacks since we don't want to accidentally use our 40 stack on anything less than Tet attempts. To do so, you can store it on a Niter's Band which you can get through a suggested quest, by buying blacksmith secret books from any blacksmith, or put the stack on an alt character. Failing Tet attempts will bring you down to duo again, which is where we will repeat the step we went over earlier. Once you get some Tet to Vala gear, head back to Fugar and complete even more enhancement quests to get your hands on some advice of Valks plus 60. We will use these to start tapping for pen to Vala armor and weapons. Keep in mind that you can also use a Frozen Tide Blackstone to guarantee a pen to Vala gear enhancement. You get one of these through the Season Pass, and I also got one of these to drop while I was grinding for more materials. Some people might say to use Cronstones to prevent your gear from downgrading while you enhance. But I did it for the Season, and I would say it's more silver efficient to just let the gear downgrade and use the Season materials to keep enhancing. So far, I have talked about how to upgrade your Tuvala armor and weapons, but I have not touched on our Tuvala accessories yet. God, I love enhancing. When enhancing accessories, we no longer need time-filled blackstones or refined magical blackstones. Instead, we will be solely relying on Tuvala ore. 
The reason for this is to tap an accessory, you need a base version of it. For example, to tap this duo earring, I need another base earring to smash into it. Going back to the fail stack chart, you will see that accessories have a higher chance to succeed, which is great on paper until you realize that failing an accessory will not just downgrade, but actually just send all of the materials into the shadow realm. On the bright side, we do get a boiling tides blackstone to guarantee a pin accessory from the season pass, and you also get a pin to vala ring at level 59 and a pin to vala earring at level 60. Through dungeons, rift bosses, and regional quests, you can get up to try accessories as well. That being said, getting full pin to vault accessories can be a painful process. But just like the armor and weapons, as long as you take your time and gather plenty of materials, it shouldn't be impossible. As a general rule of thumb, I would try to enhance your two vault gear and accessories evenly to constantly gain gear score. This also makes managing fail stacks easier as you can just tap multiple tet attempts in a row. By attempting enhancements this way, you will also stay powerful enough to keep trying new grind spots. Earlier, I mentioned all of the ways to get time filled blackstones, refined magical blackstones, and to vala ore. Most of those are not necessary. I'll be honest, for this season personally, I just grinded one hour at Basham Base completing my weekly quest, two hours of trees, and I ran three rift echoes outside of Velia. With that, I had enough material to finish my full wheel of pin to vala gear and accessories while being at level 60. During this adventure, I learned that Rift Echoes are busted, so make sure you save these Rift Fragments and craft them together in your inventory. Also, don't feel like something is wrong if you don't complete your early game in one day. I have several thousand hours of practice and I spend a ridiculous amount of time min-maxing my grinds. Of all of the ways to accomplish our goals, just grinding monsters is by far the most efficient, so I would focus on this during the early game. Speaking of goals, let's touch on them again so you know what options you have moving forward. Hitting level 61 is pretty straightforward as there are a limited amount of ways to get XP. The first way we've already gone over in this guide and that is to just grind monsters while popping as many XP buffs as possible. Another solid way to level is to do the suggested quest for the Changa Tome and then completing high level side quests. I will leave a link to a guide on Changa Tome leveling in the description. The last viable way to get XP is to use training dummies. To AFK on these, all you have to do is pop these books of training, and then for the duration listed at the top of your screen, your character will passively gain XP while you are away from your computer. Another goal we had was to complete the season pass. This will be pretty self-explanatory as every step of the pass will tell you exactly what you have to do to progress. It is important to keep this up as this will be your main source of direction since the main story quest line has been finished. If you ever feel lost or have no idea what to do next, working towards the next step of the season pass is what you should be doing. Lastly, you can push through even more quest lines to explore more of the map. I'll try to avoid spoilers here, but through the Black Spirit, you should be able to accept quests that will send you to Valencia, Camasylvia, Dregan, Odalita, the Mountain of Eternal Winter, and the Land of the Morning Light. The reason for doing this is twofold. First and foremost, you will explore the map, exposing more grind spots and activities for you to do. The other reason to push these quests is to get quest accessories to increase your stats before you get full pin to Vala. Once you finish all of the goals we have gone over so far, there's just two last things to do before we can say we are done with the early game. I recommend everyone at this point to create a new character of a different class so we can copy all of the XP and skill points we have grinded out. This will effectively give you two characters at level 61, saving you the time it took for us to get to this point all over again. To get your timepiece, head to Fugar and complete the Season Fugar's Special Timepiece quest. From here, I would head back to the character selection screen and find another class to make. This character won't be a seasoned character, so instead of going to the season servers, I would just head to a regular one instead. From here, I would do the Ancient Stone Chamber start and quickly run through the MSQ until you defeat Red Nose. At this point, it is important to stop questing and swap back to your seasonal character and right click on the timepiece to transfer your Tuvala gear and copy the XP and skill points over. Make sure you unequip all of the gear on the seasonal character and put it in Velia storage so you can easily pick it up on the new character. After the timepiece is complete, you will see that the new character is now a seasonal character and should have the same level and skill points as the class you timepieced from. 
Also, in your inventory, you will have three Tuvala weapon coupons that are used to swap the Tuvala weapons into the ones of the new class. It is important to note that quest completion will not transfer over to this new class. That is why we stopped questing as soon as we killed Red Nose. Now that this character is a seasonal, you can accept the simplified quest line, which will complete the whole MSQ just from leveling up. This should be easy as you should already be level 61, so after talking to Foodgar and the Black Spirit a few times, you will have the whole entire MSQ done on this new character too. You will also have to complete the level 50 quest to unlock PvP, and the Awakening and Succession quest to get those forms for this class. The very last thing we have to do on our seasonal character is to graduate. Normally, the last few weeks of a season, you can graduate early through a short questline given by Fugar. This will graduate your character out of the season into a normal character. In order to use the Tuvala gear from the season, you will need to use the Tuvala conversion stones to turn them to the regular versions. You will also get a season gift exchange coupon. Head over to Fugar and exchange this for the Pin Kaposha necklace. If for whatever reason you already have this, then I would go for the belt. You also have the option to turn one of the Tuvala pieces into an enhancement lower piece of boss armor. Tet Bay gloves from Pin Tuvala gloves, for example. I would exchange for the gloves, main hand, or awakening weapon. Boss gear, Kaposha, and further gearing past this point will be covered in my mid game guide. So make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel so you can see when I drop that. As for this video, we are pretty much done. I just hope that I helped a few people fully experience and understand the early game of Black Desert Online. I tried my best to keep this guide straight to the point and give players a clear path through the early game. Keep in mind that once you complete these goals, the game will really open up to you. You can deep dive into life skills like gathering, cooking, hunting, fishing, and more. All of these activities have fleshed out gearing systems for themselves. You can use contribution points and manage a worker empire to passively collect hundreds of thousands of materials for personal use or to sell. With the Corsair that I made at the end of this guide, I am tackling the huge amount of ocean content there currently is in BDO. I just created my first boat and am now trading items between islands through bartering. With all of the pin to volley gear we ended this guide on, you can hop straight into PvP and Tier 1 Node Wars. On the North America server, this is where you most likely will find my guild and I taking nodes and fighting to our heart's content. Speaking of a guild, you can take full advantage of the fact that BDO is an MMO and start or join a community of like-minded players. Lastly, I will remind you to start grinding for your infinite HP and MP potions. Hopefully I'll have a guide on all that stuff coming up soon. My YouTube channel is still very new and this is by far the biggest project that I have ever made. So if you enjoyed it, then please like the video, drop a comment below with some feedback, and of course subscribe if you want to watch more of my content. Also check out my Twitch channel where you can ask me questions live. Trust me, I am always happy to help. That should be all for now. Have a blessed rest of your day, and I'll catch you in the next one. Deuces. Take me back. Take me back to the winter days to see the times of the world and begin a stage. 23, I've been instructed by my lineage. Any means, any way, make cheddar cheese that guapa lay.